You know, I've asked myself many times, how many times, because I didn't get a direct answer from God, do I go off on some kind of tangent? Anybody else in here? Anybody else had that same problem? Every time, every time that I just didn't get a, just a direct answer, you know what, I'm praying for something and I really expect God to give me a direct answer about maybe about money, maybe about family, maybe about something. I'm thinking, God, if you don't give me a direct answer, I don't really know what I'm going to do. Because I really don't know which direction to turn. I really, I really just don't know what to do. So you've got to give me a direct answer. There was one time when I was a little younger. Hey, how you doing, man? Good to see you. <laughs> Nate brought his brother. There was one time when I didn't get an answer from God and I just argued with him and argued with him and I told him, God, if you don't give me an answer really quick, I'm just going to have to go a different direction. That was a few years ago. But I did. I said, if you don't, if you don't give me an answer real quick, I'm going to go a different direction because evidently the things that, you know, you're not working out for me. I was watching a movie last night and this girl's mom started quoting her scripture. And she said, now honey, I want to give you my favorite scripture. And she said, all things work to good. And before she could finish the verse, the girl said, mom, I don't want to hear your bunch of bull about your verses that you give me because none of it works. And I thought, you know, that's exactly how the world looks at us sometimes is when we start quoting stuff to them. They look at us and they say, I don't, that doesn't work for me, so don't start feeding me that stuff. And guys, we really got to understand, how do we reach the world? Well, we sure don't reach the world by, them show, by, by, the, by, by us showing them that we're going to go off on some tangent because God doesn't answer us. Right? I mean, sit there and think about, when, when was the last time that you asked God for something and He didn't answer you right off and you got kind of angry with Him? Is it just me? Hmm. Well, then I started thinking about this. How many times because God did not give, God did not agree with my idea. And so I spend time in the belly of a fish or out in the desert because he didn't agree with my idea. He didn't agree with my idea how to make a little money. I have, Gina and I have been married for 37 years and we have spent so much time trying to figure out how to make more money. It's the dumbest thing I've ever done. Some of you are saying, what do you mean by that? It's because we spend so much time trying to figure out what God already knows. Come on now. You're preaching good, Mark. Don't preach me down. Don't shout me down. We spend so much time saying, you know what? What is, you know, God, you're going to have to show me this. You're going to have to show me this. And all the whole time God is saying, why don't you just be quiet? And I'll show you. Yeah. God, that, that man of mine, he's driving me crazy. You're going to have to show me how to find a new one. Where to find it? Go help me find God, help me find No. He's not going to help you find another man. He's going to help you fix yourself. Love the one you're with. Right? Well, we're going to go to Joshua real quick here. Because this is a story that I think most of us know. But we got to be reminded. Can you bring Joshua up for me, Ethan? Joshua 6. What? You, you stay on your side of the stage. <laughs> you just, you just stay, turn her mic off. <laughs> now, this is, this is these guys trying to get in the promised land. You guys remember this story? Yep. These guys trying to get in the promised land, and, and they're getting ready to go up against this, this, the city of Jericho right now. Now, Jericho was not very big. It was actually about seven acres square so it wasn't very big but it had a big wall around it and they were never going to be able to get around this big wall this wall was several feet thick so they say now that you know now that they've gone back and looked at it they said there was no way to knock, to knock this wall down a lot of scientists don't believe this story is even true but we know better don't we now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel none went out and none came in now nothing's even happened yet 
And it's already saying that this, these walls have been shut. Nobody's going in and nobody's going out. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given you Jericho into your hand, its king, and all the army of the mighty men of valor. Wait a minute. Nothing's happened yet. How many of you know this story where we're going? Most of you should know. Four of you, that's great. Okay, six of you now. Now, nothing's even happened yet. We haven't even started this story, and what did he tell him? He's already given it to him. Now, I think as we go into this story, there was a lot of stuff, there was a lot of murmuring going on. <laughs> because when, when Joshua starts telling these people what they're going to have to do to knock this wall down, do you think everybody just agreed with that? All right, all right let's just go on. You shall march around the city, all you men of war, you shall go around the city once. Go around the city once, right? But you got to do this for six days. Now, seven acres is not going to take that long to march around, right? How many of you have marched around seven acres in the past ten years? Not very many of us, right? It's not going to take very long. So he said, do this six, six days once a day, right? And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around... Seventh day... Seventh is the number of perfection. perfection, completion, right? Seven days you shall march around the city seven times, and the, pre the priest shall blow the trumpets. So they've got this ram's horn. Has anybody ever seen a ram's horn? Shofar? They're going to blow that trumpet. They're going to march around that, then they're going to blow that trumpet. It, it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people will shout. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. It's kind of hard to shout every now and then. Now, I'm thinking by this point right here, if I were to tell you guys that we were going to knock down the walls of Jericho, and I'm telling you that God told me that we're going to have to march around this place, and blow the horns, and not say a thing until I tell you to. How many of you are going to obey me? The same seven. That's perfection. Can, huh? Perfection. Can, seven is perfection. <laughs> Could you imagine what people were thinking at this point? I mean, really, you got to put yourself in, the sh in, in their shoes, right? you got to think, now, nah, nah, well, anyway... So they go on, and we're going to go to chapter to verse. Uh, let's, let's skip on just for time's sake to verse 10. So they're going to get prepared for this. And they're going to march around this city for six days, one time. Then they're going to march around it on the seventh day, the priest. And they're going to blow the horns, right? Okay, now watch this. Verse 10. Now Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout. Or make any noise. How hard is it for us to not make any noise? It's almost impossible for some of us, right? Some of our noise is... Huh? You can't make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth. Until the day I say to you, shout, then shout. How many times of what I've been through, how hard is it for me to keep my mouth shut? How many times? How often is it so difficult to keep our mouth shut? We are, we are in the communication age. We had to turn her mic off for her to be quiet. We're in the, I'm just kidding you. you know well, I'm really not, but we just can't be quiet. When God starts to move, we just have to say something. And we can get on social media and say it. It's just real easy. Sometimes God tells us, He says, you know, you just need to be quiet. You just need to not say a word. Let me work. Let me do some things. Let me do some things in your life. Let me, let me do some things in your family. Just let, me, just let me take care of it. And then... For some reason, we got to say something. 
It's just, it's just, we got to let everybody know how we feel. We have to. It's just, it's just easier that way, isn't it? How about when things don't work, don't, don't work the way you should, the way you think they should, and you start telling God how it's working out and it's not the way you think it should. You start telling Him. How does that work for you? Asking for a friend. How's that work for you? All right, let's skip over to verse 15 and 16. Because sometimes we get to the point where we just can't, for some reason we just can't be quiet and let God work when God tells us, even though it may look stupid, even though it may just be plumb crazy what I'm getting ready to ask you to do, don't say a word. Wow, how hard is that? It's kind of hard for me. It may not be for you. Well, but it came to pass on the seventh day that they arose. Here, here, we're getting ready to we're getting ready to do it now. We're getting ready to go through it. But it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day only, they marched around the city seven times. And on the seventh day it happened. When the priests blew the trumpets that Joshua said to the people, Shout! For the Lord has given you the city. Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction and all who are in it. Only Rahab the harlot shall live. How many of you know that's a whole different story right there? <laughs> Rahab the harlot. Who's going to preach that one? Tim? Okay. <laughs> that's a whole nother sermon right there. Only Rahab the harlot shall live and... She and all who are with her in her house. Ooh, boy, that's a, we could just keep going for the rest of the afternoon on that one. Because she hid the messengers that went. And you by all means abstain from the accursed things, lest you become accursed when you take the accursed things and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble for it. Now let, let's go ahead and skip to chapter to verse 20. Go ahead and go to 20. You were almost there anyway. So the people shouted when they said they were supposed to shout the people shouted and the priests blew the trumpets and it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the walls fell down flat they fell down flat now these walls were something that you could look at and you could think it's never going to happen I guarantee you there were people in that crowd telling the other people, guys, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. I don't know why we're doing this. It's never. This is an impossibility. We're wasting our time. I got other things to do than listen to old Joshua because this guy has gone nuts. He says he's listening to God and he's telling us to blow these trumpets and to shout only when he says to shout. And all of a sudden, the walls fell. Because we're kind of looking at this story and we're thinking, oh, everybody just went with this and everybody was okay with this. The whole church agreed. Amen. The whole church was in unity about this. You know, sometimes you're going to have family that's not going to agree with you. Anybody have family in here that doesn't agree with them? I didn't ask you to raise your hands because some of your family might be in here. Got family that doesn't agree with you. Got people at work that, doesn't agree, that don't agree with you. You know, when you start talking about the things that are working for you and what God's doing for you and people just make fun of you. Huh? That's okay. How about summer when when have you told anybody that, that you're thinking about going to to school this fall? Really? So whenever you start whenever you start doing things for whenever you start I don't know, try and make a decision, 
Huh? Whenever you start stepping out, whenever you start stepping out is when everything seems to attack you. We talked about that this morning. You know, really, if you're not doing anything for God, the devil's not going to bother you. You're going to do it all on your own. Well, uh, thank you. Amen. You know, because really, when you're not doing anything for God, the devil's not going to mess with you. But the moment that you start, the moment that you start thinking, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do something. I'm going to step out. I'm going to, I'm going to do something at church. I, it may be this simple. I'm going to start sweeping the floors on Sunday because I'm going to, I'm going to have to start relieving. Uh, who does? Who, who sweeps the floor? David. I'm going to start relieving David from having to sweep the floors every Sunday. I'm going to start helping him. And then sure enough, all of a sudden, something comes up every Sunday afternoon that you can't stay. Come on now. Huh? Or you choose not to stay. Every time, that's, I know you're saying, well, that's a little video thing. No, it's not really because you've just started to step out. Something's going to go after you. Can't you even imagine what these people were thinking the whole time they were marching around that place before the walls fell? Are we really going to only have to do this seven times? Is this really going to work? How many of you are still waiting for Trump to come back? Getting a little political in here, amen. Still waiting, still waiting. Look, God's got control of that. Amen. Whatever happens, right? He's in control of all that. So I read this a couple of days ago and I was thinking, you know, I'm going to have to share this because I know there's somebody in here that is just waiting, that is just holding on, that is just waiting. You've been marching around that wall for so long it's time to shout. Yeah. Come on, stand up with yeah. me. You know, come on, stand up with me. Don't look at me like you're crazy. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a Joshua, but I'm kind of like one. Yeah. Not trying to get you to do something crazy. Not trying to get you something stupid. Listen, it's time to step out. Yes. It's time to say, Lord, I am ready and willing to do something for you. Whatever it is. It may be in church. It may be at work. It may be in a, in, a, in a relationship that you're in right now. There may be a relationship that you need to get out of. You need to shout that out. So that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to shout. But some of you are going to follow me around. You're going to come out of the chairs. If that's you, you're going to step out right now and come with me. Come on, let's go. Come on. I see one, two. Come on, follow me. Come on. Come on, just line up right here. Let's go. Let's go. Look at all these people. Look at all these people who are being bright. Look at all these brave people. Look here. It's time to step out and say, Lord, whatever you have for me, I'm ready. We've got a teacher in here that is stepping out. And we need to be behind her in everything that she does. We need to be praying for her. We need to be shouting with her. We got somebody getting ready to go to Bible school. I don't know what all these things are, but all these things are what we're concerned with right here in this line. Maybe somebody's trying to get out of a relationship. Maybe somebody's trying to get in one. Maybe somebody is, is needing a, a, something with their job. Listen, it doesn't matter because we're going to shout the wall down. Yep. Oh, follow me. Come on, Star Wars. Let's go. Come on, follow me around. All right, guys, here we go. Here we go. Come on. We're going to walk around and everybody's going to be shouting with us. Come on, we can't be the only ones. You got to be able, you guys got to be with us. Come on now, this is your church. This is your church right here. We'll just pick another one up right here. I just picked him up. Come on, we're walking around. You guys are looking at us like we're crazy. You're going to see the walls fall. Come on, let's keep going. Keep going. Oh, I just, my crowd just keeps getting bigger. It just keeps getting bigger. 
We're going to shout the walls down this morning. There's nothing that's going to stop the army of God. God has given us the city. He's given us the city. We're, hey, we're not waiting for the city. We've already got it. Now we're just doing what God has called us to do. I'm marching around and I'm saying, Lord, whatever you got for me is what I'm going to do. Whatever you got for me. Any sickness in my body has got to go because I'm shouting it down this morning. Come on. I'm shouting this morning. And I'm marching. Well, come on then. I just picked me up another one. She was saying, good job. I just put her in. <laughs> There's nothing that God can't do. Come on, there's nothing. Come on, say it with me. Nothing. There's nothing that God can't do. Nothing. <laughs> Woo, boy. Some of you guys are taking this seriously. Now, Father, we shout those walls down. Anything that stands in front of us, anything that is in the way, we shout the walls down. The walls are falling. There is nothing going to stop us. We do this in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Woo, boy, that's good. Woo. <laughs> you want the mic? <laughs> Woo, ain't God good. Now listen. We did this. And you guys are going, well, that was a little bit of fun, but that was a little bit of crazy too. We did it because we believe it. If you've been wanting something to happen in your life, and I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, is not too big for God. Nothing is too big for God. We shouted those walls down. You want your marriage to be better? You shout the walls down. There you go. You shout them down. You go, well, that's crazy. Well, it don't matter. That's right. Listen, this is who we are, folks. Nothing stands in your way but your mind. The devil cannot attack you because you are a child of God. You are not fighting the devil. You are fighting your mind. So in Jesus' name, all those things that are in your mind right now that are keeping you from moving forward are gone. I'm speaking that over you right now. All those things that are in your mind right now that keep you from moving forward are gone in Jesus' name. There's nothing that can stop you. You don't have those things thinking that you're not worthy enough to do what God has called you to do. You are worthy right now where you sit. Listen, you don't have to do anything for God to love you more than what He loves you Right now. He has set something in place for you to do and you have shouted that into your life. And there's nothing that's going to stop it. Nothing. At, everybody say to me, say with me, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. nothing, nothing is going to stop God from moving in my life. And I mean it. Now you tell the devil right now, you put your foot down on the ground like this. You stomp him back in the ground where he belongs. Devil, you've been trying to get up from the ground for a long time. Just put him back in the ground. Stomp him back in the ground. He doesn't belong in your life. He doesn't belong in your life at all. So anybody who tells you that he does or that tries to make you think in your mind that you've lost it and that, you know, you're going the wrong direction, I'm telling you right now, they're lying. They say, well, you're stupid. No, they're stupid. Because what God has for you is the greatest thing that you will ever do in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to sing one more song. We just changed everything around on you this morning, didn't we? Come on, stand up. You may have heard of this. Come on, let's just put our hands up here in victory. 
Hey, we got victory in here this morning. How many of you got victory? Hallelujah. about the Lord how he picked me up and turned me around how he placed my feet on solid ground again when I think about the Lord how he saved yeah. me how he Come on, think about me it. how he filled me Woo. with the hope On solid ground, it makes me want to shout. Yeah, come on, a shout this morning. Jesus, Hallelujah. Worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, it makes me want to shout. Yeah. your pastor coming up here. Come on, give him a shout. <laughs> He's got my grandson with him. Hey, y'all. Go ahead and take a seat real quick. Trade off. Oh, trade off. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Good to see y'all this morning. How, how's everybody doing? Did you all know that Amy could sing? We always put her back there on the keyboard, but I don't know if you've ever heard her sing before. Some of you may be wondering, like, what, I, what exactly is going on this morning? Well, something we do every summer is we shake it up a little bit through June and July. We hear from different speakers, and, and we have different worship teams, too, apparently, this summer. So that's cool, too. Um, next week, we'll actually be hearing from Amy. She's going to bring us the word next week. So I don't know if you guys remember hearing her last time, but she comes with a, a boatload of energy. I don't know where all that comes from. But I'm really excited. Um, it also gives me a chance to kind of get charged up for the next series because uh, how long was that series we just did? It was 16 weeks. That was a little bit exhausting, if I'm, if I'm honest with you. So it's good to have a little time to catch up. And speaking of exhausting, we had that car show yesterday and it was 400 degrees outside. <laughs> At least that's what it felt like, right? <laughs> Yeah, you should have seen everybody that was here all day. It's like, I don't, are they going to make it till three? I think everybody cut out a little bit early, didn't they? Yeah, the heat was a little bit too much. But really, it was a great car show for our first one ever. We had how many cars show up? 36 cars show up. Uh, we generated about $1,000, which will go towards the car care outreach that happens this Saturday. We're going to be fixing cars for widows and single moms and the elderly. So how many cars you got lined up for that? Yeah, we've got eight cars lined up for that, so that's awesome. 
You know, you guys are a part of all that through your giving too. We're not just going to stop at $1,000. If it costs more than 1000 to fix these cars, we're going to cover that. And that's all possible because of your giving. So if you want to give today and you're giving by cash or check, just raise your hand and one of our ushers will bring you an offering envelope. Um, or you can always give online anytime. And how you do that is at nolimits.fyi.